Ladies and gentlemen, the activities of the earth cannot be explained beyond these three personalities. Every time something happens, it's either God or man or angels. And by identification, Satan. Every time things happen, it's one of the three personalities. Anything that happens on the earth, one of the three personalities is responsible. For you to know which of them, that is why you must know who they are. You must know their limits. You must know their modus operandi to be able to know who is responsible for things that happen like this. And it's very important so that you don't give God credit for what Satan has done. So you don't give Satan credit for what God has done. You've got to know these personalities. So your knowledge or otherwise of the three personalities will affect how you think. It will affect how you think. Look at the case of Job for example. Job was a man. And you know the way people think. They think Job did nothing. And then God and Satan tried Job. People think that it was God that said, Satan, come, oh, come, oh, go and try Job. God does not do business with Satan. They are not classmates. God and Satan have nothing in common. Satan is an enemy. And because he's an enemy of man, he's an enemy of God. But religion tells you that that's what happened. Now in Job, you will discover that Job lived in fear. Lived in so much fear. And what happened to Job was his expectation. Look at Job chapter 3 verse 25. Job chapter 3 verse 25. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So Job's expectation was his fear. Look at the next verse 26 of Job chapter 3. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. What I feared came upon me. Listen to me everybody. Fear connects you to your expectation. Fear connects you to the object of your fear. If you are living in fear, you are living in faith in what you fear. Because fear is perverted faith. Fear is perverted faith. The reason why you are afraid is because you believe that that thing will happen. So fear is an expression of confidence in what you fear. Fear is a connector. It connects you to the object of your fear. If you are afraid of dying, that fear connects you to death. If you are afraid of failure, that fear connects you to failure. If you are afraid of disgrace, that fear connects you to disgrace. That's why God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba Father. Somebody shout, no fear here. I thought I would hear it louder. Say, let the devil be afraid. So Job said, it was my fear that came upon me. And Job will do everything trying to prevent his fear. What were the things that Job did? Look at chapter 1 verse 6. Look at Job's presumption. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan. Now when you hear the Lord in the Old Testament. You want to find out who is the Lord. Because the word Lord was used for God, it was used for judges, it was used for deities, it was used for, you know, it was used for even people. Like today in the court system, we call judges my Lord. Okay, so by the time you say my Lord, you may be talking about a judge. It may not be our God. So when you see my Lord, you must read the context to know who he's referring to. Is it clear? So don't always see when you say God, Lord, you just conclude is God. No. No, at all. The only definition of God we have is in Christ. What Christ doesn't do, God never does. Even if they call his name on it, it may not be his name they are calling all. They must have called his name wrongly. Are we teaching good? Okay, now. So, Job was presumptuous. And because he was presumptuous, that, that gave room to his family. Look at the presumption of Job. Give me verse 5. Job's presumption. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. 
For Job said, It may be, are you observing? It may be that my sons have sinned. <laughs> You're not sure they have sinned. So this is sin consciousness. And cause God in their hearts. That is why he gave the offering. That is why he prayed the prayer. So the prayer and the offering was given in fear. So instead of it being an offering to God, it became an offering to fear. Job lived a life of fear and presumption. He is not an example of a believer. And of course, what he feared came upon him. Especially when it was added with prayer and offering. <laughs> In Job's utterances, it was obvious Job was ignorant of Satan. Because if Job knew that who Satan was, he would have just said, In the name of Jesus, Satan, you can't touch my children. I put, I, I, I put an embargo. Satan, matobala, you cannot touch my children. No, I draw a line of protection. You can't cross it. In Jesus' name. That will be the end of it. You resist the devil, he will argue. You resist the devil, he will flee. But Job was busy saying, it may be my children have sinned against God. It may be they have sinned against God. Please let me give an offering in case they have sinned against God so that God will not punish them. Job thought it was God that is punishing because he didn't know who Satan was. When things are rough, you start saying, maybe God is working out something. God is trying to teach me a lesson. So, how many of you will carry your child and give Boko Haram in Sambisa forest to teach them a lesson? Is there any of you that will do it? Jesus said, if you that are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your father? How can your father be the one using evil to teach you a lesson? Then what's the job of the Holy Spirit? The job of the Holy Spirit is to guide us to all truth and to teach us all things. Not, not the devil. The devil is an enemy of God. God never does business with his enemy. God does business with his children. Glory to God. If I'm teaching good, can I hear a good amen? So the next time you see evil, say, stop! Hey, stop there. Take one more step, I crush you. Stop there. In the name of Jesus. And go back. Back to where you came from. There's no accommodation here. You never paid rent here. So you cannot accommodate space. Jesus paid for this space. I've been bought with a price. Therefore, I glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are God's. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. Yeah. Every good and perfect gift cometh from above. Evil never comes from God. Hallelujah. So your knowledge of the three personalities will let you know why things happen. Jesus told us where sickness came from. Sickness is an oppression of the devil. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were what? Oppressed of who? The devil. So every sickness is an oppression of the devil. God never uses sickness to teach lessons. No. He heals them. And Jesus healed how many of them? All of them. Because sickness is not from him disasters never come from god i have told you that if god was behind disasters and flood and earthquakes and all the disasters he wouldn't have rebuked the wind and the wave he would have said more wind and more wave come on the will of god jesus stood up stop peace be still and there was a great calm then he now turned and said why did you guys fear he didn't do like some of you will have done if it's some of you, you will have turned and say, she have been warning you not to fear. I have been warning you not to fear. You will not hear something. I've been warning you not to fear. And you'll be doing that till the boat will start sinking. But Jesus doesn't behave like that. First of all, he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the wave. He spoke peace. When everything stopped, he now turned and say, you guys, I told you not to doubt. That's the love of God. Observe, Peter is walking on the water. Jesus, if you are the one, ask me to come. And Jesus said, come. Peter stood up. C-O-M-E. See? Then he heard the wind and the wave. He took his eyes from Jesus and started looking at the water. And he started sinking. And as he's sinking, he cried out, Jesus! Jesus grabbed him and held him. And said, oh, Peter. He held him first. He secured him first. Are you understanding? He secured him first. Then he said, why did you doubt? He didn't say, uh -huh. you see, you see, drink two bottles, drink two bottles. 
he will have said drink two bottles first don't you, ain't you glad that that is your father's character your father's character is always to save you even when you are the one that did the stupid thing god still comes in to save you amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me somebody shout hallelujah yeah. 